Hey everybody, so we're going to go back to a more of a nude style format for a while. Uh, the reason for doing this is that I'm switching over almost completely to using Twitch streaming for a lot of the dev videos. So you know how we've been having on the channel, I'll do a dev video and that'll be pretty much what my work was for the day. Uh, now it's turned over to where on Twitch I'll be doing, I've been streaming even longer than I make the normal videos, so we're doing... Uh, streams almost practically daily now, uh, with the exception of Sunday. I just, I, it's a hit or miss or false stream on Sundays. Um, so, like every day here, starting from 10 a.m. Eastern time, going to pretty much whenever we stop. Uh, the target stop time is about noon, but I've gone to about four the last couple days here. So, that's for that. But as for the news format, I don't see much of a point of doing the dev work videos or transferring the stream videos from Twitch over to YouTube as there's not a lot really going on. And that really was the problem with the original dev work videos. It was pretty much only like 20 minutes of actual content for like two hours worth of video because most of it was just me pecking at the keyboard, adding code in, which it was cool. I mean, you guys could hear me talk about the design and, and process, but I figured out after looking at my low view count and kind of doing some research on what YouTube likes and stuff like that, that spending more time talking about the design and less of showing the code will work out a little bit better. I mean, I'll still do code occasionally, but I'm going to separate the two. So I'm going to make videos where I talk about what's going on throughout the week, which will be the news video. So we're going to go back to that style. And then we'll do separate videos where I'll talk about particular parts of the software that I'm working on. Uh, for example, talking about what the hell the JSON processing system is or how we handle packets and stuff like that so you guys know what's going on with that. I'll also be doing some tutorial videos explaining how to do this stuff in your own code because, I mean, anybody can pull down Volts Engine and use it in their own project as a dependency. And if you have it as your own project, you now get access to the whole JSON processing system, which will do a whole bunch of cool things. Um, speaking of different systems, uh, this week... Uh, is entirely geared towards the pre-update to 112. Next week will be the actual update to 112. I know I was saying that this week we were starting on the 112, but I kind of got caught up in the abstraction system again. I know I said I wouldn't do it, but I, I really like working on the abstraction systems. They're kind of cool. They're interesting. They're challenging. But uh, we got a bit of a design. So anyways, I I've I think I've shown the module design before on one of my videos. I don't remember, but since this is going to be short, I might as well go over it again, um, get the video time up a little bit here. And it'll give us a good starting point to explain what's going on for those who haven't been catching up. So the um, the whole process of building up the abstraction system is to get us to a point where we have a separation of functionality in Volts Engine. So I want to separate everything out into its own little thing. So the API would be by itself. It will not tie with anything else. Axe system by itself. JSON system by itself. Blast system and so on. So none of these systems will overlap with each other directly. They'll all be indirectly tied to each other. And they will never touch Forge code. They will never touch Minecraft code. That's where the abstraction system comes in. This is designed to communicate with the core. The core is designed to communicate with everything else. And then the mods communicate with the systems or the core, and they never touch the abstraction system. So I want to make sure that no mod touches anything down here. That means they will never communicate directly to IC2. They'll never communicate directly to the RF system, the Forge Energy, the Fluid API, stuff like that. It won't happen anymore. There will be no direct connection. And the whole reason for doing this is that I will not have to update mods as often. Um, once we get this done, once this is completely done, Volts Engine will be the only thing that has to be updated each Minecraft version. And considering how many physical projects I have, I'm up to 200 something projects, this is a really good idea. It will be so much less work. With the exception of the single blocks mods, since they're kind of screwed, they, they have to update each version. Luckily for them, they're simple mods. But I this is what it's been started on this week. So the front half of the week was spent on just cleaning this up. So the first half got this part done, where we separated everything out. We kind of cleaned everything out. The back half of the week, which was Thursday and Friday, the abstraction system got started. Uh, actually, I think it's a Friday and Saturday is what we did this on. It doesn't matter. Uh, so I've got the abstraction system started. I've started on the 1710 modular for the abstraction system. There's still a ton of work that needs to be done. Uh, we'll probably get this completely done somewhere in the middle of the week. And somewhere in the middle of the week, I'm going to go ahead and start on the 112 modular as well. So that way I can start comparing what these two look like to each other and start figuring out how we're going to properly abstract it. ICBM is the target first mod to be abstracted. After that, it will be the Armory mod, then Assembly Line, then Basic Industries. And of course, the add-ons for Armory mod will go with it. The cool thing about the add-ons for the Armory mod is they are pretty much non-Minecraft dependent as it is. Uh, they only have a single mod class to load them. Uh, once I do away with that, 
I will never have to update any of the Armory add-ons unless I'm adding new content uh, features or bug fixing things. Uh, which should be rare because the cool thing about being in a JSON data-driven system, any bug that pops up, you can go into the main mod and go, okay, I want to prevent this from happening again. And anytime that bug reappears anywhere else, it's no longer a problem. Although it'd be better just to go in and fix the bug in the first place, which I will do is just, it's a cool thing to have pre-implementation to handle bugs. As some of you know, there's been a few issues with things like multi-blocks failing recently. And it hasn't really been the multi-blocks failing. It was a little piece of energy code that crashed and took down several systems with it. And that has actually been fixed, but it was fixed in such a weird way. Uh, so the original, the original system caught the bug. Uh, but in catching the bug, it spammed the console and lagged everything out. I eventually did go through and actually fix it with just a null point exception, but the whole entire volts engine is built up that way where it will catch the bug and prevent the server from crashing, but unfortunately because of how consoles are designed, it'll lag. Uh, I'm going to be designing most of the mods that way, so that way they'll never crash, but I'll fix the spam here eventually too. Um, getting on because we got sidetracked here. Uh, so the abstraction system. The first step of this abstraction system actually getting it to function, and this is where I was also talking about where... We actually do have a design here. I have a plan. I'm getting better at this. Uh, I don't normally plan everything out in this much detail because th it never works that way. But I'm going to try it this time. So the ideal is that the first iteration of the abstraction system, we are simply just going to abstract the node and tile system. This is like the bulk of the work for things. Uh, so tile entities are majority of the work when it comes to a mod. Um, everything outside of that is just kind of like superficial. It's not as much work and can be kind of worked around. But these two parts, these have severe massive amounts of logic to them sometimes. I mean like the missile code is like a few hundred lines long just because it has to figure out if you can fire the missile or not. Um, so we want to get this abstracted so that way anything that has a tile entity is now going to use a node instead of a tile entity. So the tile entity code is going to be abstracted away from as a node. The cool thing about the nodes is that I can stick these into anything. It could be a tile entity, it could be a minecart, it could be the new rail cart system from assembly line, it could be an elevator shaft, it could be uh, a little entity that ho hovers near a player, it could be a flying object, a gas, a creeper, it could be anything. The nodes can fit in anything that has a has the capacity to hold it, hold a node. And the logic is designed in such a way that it will function in a mobile state. At least that's the theory. We haven't actually tested it. I still got to do that part. But yeah. And with that, this is the plan that kind of abstracts. So what I was talking about, we have two different versions. You can do tile or entity version. So you have a node host. The node host is going to be hidden. It not, you won't be able to tell what this is. This will be inside the, each of the abstracted versions. But the node will be the front facing version. This will be what everything's built onto. It'll hold onto a tile position, which we just made yesterday, which will then interact with the world via tile data and tile entity data. So I'm going to be renaming everything. So when I make my system and finish abstracting it, it's going to change the terminology. Uh, this is partially to do with the fact that we are independent from Minecraft with uh, a lot of the data. So I'm trying to rename things in a way that makes more sense. So Minecraft uses the term block, uh, which works. I mean, it's a block of matter. But in a normal game engine, it's usually called a tile because it's a... It's a I don't, I don't know how that, why that terminology is used, but it's a tile object in your world, which better describes it. So you'll have this object called tile data. This will be position dependent. So when you call it, you'll get a position. So you go, okay... Node will go um, get the tile data at my position or get the tile data near me or something. It'll go like, okay, position, get new position or world that get position of tile data. And it'll be returned to tile data. And with that tile data object, it doesn't have to go, okay, tile data dot get re is replaceable past all the location. It just goes, okay, tile data is replaceable. Is side solid? It, what is your material? What is your state name? Uh, we're going to be using strings for state names. Uh, I will come up with a data object to do states properly too because there's a little bit more complexity with states than, um, than that they just have custom names. It'll go, okay, what is your entity data? With the entity data, we're going to store capabilities. Um, they're not going to be the same as capabilities in like, the newer Minecraft versions. Uh, this will be something like, well, actually it'll be similar, but this will be a, a, a static object. And it'll go, okay, uh, you're capable of power. 
and then the capability data will actually describe how the power works. How much power can I put into you? How much power can I take out of you? What is your max capacity? What sides can I access? This There will be a global info for this, and there will be a local data. So global info will describe, okay, what can all of your tiles do? Not just one tile, all of them. And then the local will go, okay, this is what this exact tile can do. This will be stat this will be catched for that tile as long as it exists. As soon as it breaks, of course, it'll go away, but this will give us a ton of information. And because it's encapsulated in a wrapper, uh, we get uh, a ton of like functionality uh, bonus and benefit out of it. Uh, moving on here, we have, I think, one more drawing. This one I think is crap, though. If I remember making it, I made this on the stream yesterday. Fortunately, I also got a dog that's whining at me for attention, so I have to cut this short. So this is kind of how the uh, abstraction system is actually going to work. So we'll have the engine. The engine is not going to go away. So we'll have a main engine class. It'll hold on to a mod instance, which will be the, these guys. So there'll be a different mod loader per version. And there's plans to actually make this work so that way we can ship with every version of Minecraft. So every version we support will be built into Volts Engine at some point in time. It's not going to happen with the first version. It will happen eventually. So when you load Volts Engine, there will only be one Volts Engine you'll have to download for all versions. One Volt version of ICBM you'll download for all versions. And it will be inserted in, and there will be a piece of code that will go, okay, I'm sitting in a 1.7.10 environment, so therefore it will pick this version to load, which then will load this version of the wrapper. Uh, the wrapper will handle all the calls. So when you go to the engine, the engine will go, uh, get my... Get the Minecraft interface, it'll go to the Minecraft interface, okay, give me the world. And it'll call this guy, and it'll go, okay, give me the world, and this guy will pass back a world instance to this, which it'll pass it back to, say, ICB, because ICB wanted to know what the world is. It'll do the same thing for entities, materials, uh, blocks, items, tiles. Anything that needs to be wrappered will go from the engine, so you go engine, uh, get Minecraft interface, uh, get me the object. And it'll go back and forth in a wrapper and a castle and everything. And this will essentially separate everything out. Because then we can make a new wrapper per version. And I don't even have to make the wrapper myself. So if someone comes along and they go, you know what? I want to play ICBM in 164 Minecraft. All they have to do is write the wrapper and the mod loader and put it inside Volts Engine and it will function. As long as they also give you all the data. And you'll have to... When, you, when I'm talking about this wrapper, by the way, it won't be the only object you'll have to do. You'll have to port over like the JSON loaders. You'll have to port over some of the... Uh, uh, there would be a lot of code that needs to be moved around because you can't just do one version of the next easily. <clears throat> uh, the main, uh, if I can clear my throat here quick. So the main thing that will actually have to be transferred between each version is the item block and tile entity wrapper and the entity wrapper. So you have like four objects that have to be transferred. Uh, with those four objects, you pretty much do most of the work. Uh, the JSON stuff. I can probably abstract it in such a way that I fix any of the stupidity with it. Right now, a lot of the JSON stuff does depend on the block wrapper object. Uh, so if we can get that separated out, then you won't have to port that between each version, which will be amazing. Uh, there's a lot of things I have to work on. Um, this is where we're, uh, if I can point at the code here. So templates have to be ported, right? We have to basically port a lot of things. So there's abstraction where we have to make an entity data object per version. And this is what actually wrappers all the calls. Uh, it probably won't need much work for that. That probably won't change much per version. Uh, tile data, tile materials. But here's the Minecraft wrapper. It's actually what it looks like. Uh, some of this stuff will probably be changed, but you'll be catching a lot of stuff in here, and you'll be just wrapping it. So if they go, okay, get tile material by name, you'll get the name. If you go get material for material... It'll make a material. If it actually contains the material, it'll return the material. Right now, we're, I'm trying to register all the materials so that way... These are actually used for the JSON system, not just for this. That's the reason why there actually is a string method, is the JSON system will go, okay, I want to be of material grass, and it'll go, okay, what the hell is grass, and it'll, it'll return it, grass material. Um, entity data, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of work that still needs to be done. But it's the frameworks down here is what the part's going to take a lot of work here, is that we have the tile entity wrapper that has to be ported. This is a prefab for all of the templates. So if this changes, these templates down here have to get updated too. Uh, and there's item templates and there's tile templates. Uh, since most people don't know what the template system is, these are uh, used by an automatic code generation system to mix and match these together to form something. So if I want to make a tile that has a tank in it, has an energy, has an inventory, it'll go, okay, here's the tank, here's the in uh, inventory, here's the energy, and it'll combine those three together and output a new tile wrapper for your object. Uh, we're doing it this way versus other ways, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, anyways, I will make another video about this later, talking in more detail about this, but I'm going to end this now because apparently I have a dog who doesn't understand that when I record, I'm trying to record. And uh, if for, for some of those who've watched me stream, 
she I think it was a Tuesday stream. She did this to me like every ten minutes. But uh yeah, I'll see you guys later.